Hey guys, I know it's been such a long time since I've done a video. I've been really, really sick lately and just didn't really feel up to it to make a video. Uh, that and the worst thing was I was sick and I had to work at the same time for like the last two weeks where it was just full on courses and everything every day. Um, so finally I got together myself and some thoughts and everything and decided to do a video. Um, I'm just about to go to work and I just thought I'll just get it out of the way since I'm all dressed up and stuff. There may be some noise in the background because I think one of my neighbours is mowing the lawn again. Um, it's a sunny day today I suppose so yeah let's get started. I guess I'll start off with a positive this week. Um, this week because I was sick I actually revisited a lot of old um, TVB dramas so I guess some of you guys might know that I do speak Cantonese and a bit of Vietnamese as well um, and I've grown up watching TVB like all my life so you know I've watched everything well there are one or two thing dramas that I just thought no, I'm not gonna watch that oh shit um, but I've been watching A Wong lately and it, it's just I've forgotten so much about the story and what it is and everything that it was really cool just to sort of get back into it um, so that was one of the positives of this week. Um, another thing that is sort of, I don't even know if it's a positive or a negative. I talked about this on my blog post yesterday, if you read my blog. It's this book that I bought. Um, so Yoji Yamamoto's My Dear Bomb. You're not going to be able to see anything because it's just all black. This is the Japanese thing that I was telling you about. And when you open up the book, Japanese! So... I like the book because it's pretty. I like the fact that I have a book. I don't like the fact that I can't read it. Uh, and it has given me thoughts of maybe I should just learn Japanese just so I can read the book. I mean, if this was just written in maybe even Chinese, maybe I could slowly, slowly use a dictionary and just make my way through. But unfortunately, it's all in Japanese, so I don't know about that one. Um, but the concept of people buying books to feel smarter, I guess I feel very smart. But I haven't read it, so yeah, if anyone knows how I can read the book, please let me know in the comment section below or send me an email because I would really, really want to know how I can actually get a copy and just read it. I don't want to buy it though because I'm not going to pay six to seven hundred dollars for it. I'm on a waiting list with uh, Angus and Robertson, so please. Please, Yoji Yamamoto, please just print the book. Please. Um, I went to readers though, and I guess to make myself feel better because I couldn't read that book, I bought this book instead, which is Vagenda. Um, yes, it is a bit of a tongue-in-cheek title. I read this... Well, <coughs> I picked it up at readers um, because I thought, oh, Vagenda, that's interesting. And... I just started reading it at Readers in queue and I read like three chapters and I thought yeah I think I should just buy the book because I look like a bit of a douche if I don't buy it and I just keep sitting there reading it so interesting very interesting so far it's very um it's very funny it's got a it's a it's sort of like a tell you how it is type thing no hold backs very straightforward there's all sorts of different terminology for vagina in this book uh, which is very very interesting but basically this book is about how women's bodies or how women are perceived in media and also what the media does to women so so far I've read about um, topics like you know the beauty industry like what sells to women you know it, it's it's usually something like oh you've got something wrong go fix yourself with a product um, so that's how beauty and all that kind of, kind of stuff sells. It's a very, I'm very, doing a very, like, I'm doing no justice in giving you like a, such a short little snippet. But that's where I'm up to at the moment. I'm only, I'm still up to chapter three. Um, but hopefully I'll get this done soon and I'll give you a review on how I felt about the book. Um, another positive this week kind of stems into the, I wouldn't say negatives. Um, so if you read my blog post about couple of weeks ago you would know that I'm actually going through the winter period which is the reflections and also the replanning of 
um, my life and where am I going and all that kind of stuff. I'm turning 30 next month and it's not as scary as I thought it would be when I was 28. So now that I'm 29, kind of bordering into 30, it actually, to me, it feels like more of, I feel like an acceptance. I'm ready to go into it. Um, so uh, as you would know, backtracking a few weeklies or favorites a couple of months ago, I started doing uh, playback a couple of months ago, or eight weeks ago. So we finally finished it last week, which is pretty sad because I don't have this outlet of creativity anymore, which I am thinking I might do for the next round. Um, so if you're interested, by all means, join us. Um, and because of this process, I've actually learned a lot more about myself and see the things that are just like glaring at me, the, the, the components that I'm missing or I feel are not up to scratch. And the biggest one for me is, um, for a better word, feeling like a loner. Like, it's not even feeling like a loner, it's even being perceived as being a loner. So, for instance, uh, a lot of people, I would say, see me as the person who goes to workshops or networking gigs or whatever, and I'm either in the background just sort of fading away, or I either go up front and start talking and stuff like that to people, but then kind of be all awkward and, and stuff like that. Um, to me, I, I kind of can see that as well. And one of the main reasons why I do that is because I feel sometimes I am a bit too nice or I'm a bit, I don't know what I'm doing here or I feel like I'm not accepted or I feel like I'm not part of the group. I mean, these are universal fears. I mean, everybody fears not being not good enough or fears like people don't like them or fear like, you know, I don't belong and that sort of thing. It's a universal thing. So it's not just me, I guess. So seeing that and for me to kind of share that story at playback last week has given me a better insight into the person that I am. Um, like the other blog post I wrote two weeks ago, uh, I am very, like, very nice in that it's like, it's too nice and it's not, it's not positive for anyone. And I guess why I did that was because uh, a few years back when we first turned 21, geez, that was like nine years ago, um, so it was like a milestone time, I suppose, 21, 22-ish, um, some people told my friends and I, my core group, my close group of friends that we were the mean girls. So basically, one of my friends was the, the mean girl, the ringleader, and me and my other friend was the follower. And that really took us back. Because it made me think, you know, am I really that mean to people? Am I really that not not nice or not kind or whatever? I, I, I really just didn't know how to process that. I mean, I know my friends and I, we all just felt very like, wow, like, what the hell? We don't try to do anything to hurt people. I know we joke around a little bit. And sometimes we may have in-house jokes that might make other people feel, you know, a um, bit strange. But... You know, it's just, it's not like we try, we did that on purpose. It's not like we actively went out and like, you know, we're hating on people or we're like bitching about people every day. I mean, come on, we're girls, everyone bitches, you know, but we didn't do anything about it. Uh, like we didn't actively go out and, and seek revenge or anything like that. Um, but I guess from that moment onwards, I started to be nice. And the nice that I was, was putting other people in front of me instead of me instead of like serving me I mean I don't need to put myself in front of them but it's more like in my own in my own living in my own life I really should be doing things for me and not just for other people to make other people happy so that's when I started doing this nice thing and for me it was a mask it was a mask not that I'm not a nice person but I'm not nice to that point you know I'm not nice to the point of where I'm I'm doing things to make other people happy and I'm not happy and in a sense, when you're too nice, you can be seen as like a pushover. And that's how I felt. And I guess a, a lot of people picked on that, picked up on that, you know, that, that oh, she's a bit of a pushover, so maybe let's take advantage of her. And so what happened was, over the years, a lot of people started taking advantage of me. And it's not necessarily a monetary thing it could be anything it could be um like a like a, a mental thing or a psychological thing or even just like asking you to do something but not asking it's sort of like a demand 
and it's become more prevalent in the last couple of weeks when I'm going through this journey of actually crossing over. I mean, when I turned 21, I didn't really feel much of an adult. When I turned 25, I still didn't feel like much of an adult. You know, I still didn't know what I was doing. I still didn't know what was going on and everything. And now that I'm turning 30, I feel like things are finally, like, clicking. Like, I actually do feel like, oh, okay. Even though when you're 25, you're meant to actually get into that maturity stage and your amygdala is meant to just grow and you're meant to be more um, adult-like and mature. But for me, I guess, I everyone needs a bit of time. Everyone does it differently. And for me, I guess, it's only now that things are starting to click in. And I think one of the biggest reasons why that sort of happened now is because I'm accepting myself and I'm accepting who I am instead of, like, not being who I am and denying it and also, you know, denying all the bad, bad things or the unresourceful things, which, like I said in my blog post, it's absolutely normal. It's absolutely normal to feel, you know, these sorts of things, like to feel like a loner, to feel like no one loves you, to feel like no one cares and to feel like, you know, you're mean or whatever. Now I don't care anymore. I mean, I'm trying to not care anymore. I'm trying to get out of myself. Um, one person made a comment in the in the playback when I was telling my story, uh, we have to share insights and that sort of thing. And one person commented saying that it kind of feels like I wear masks. And I absolutely, I absolutely identified and I totally agreed with what she said. I do wear masks every day. Um, and I don't want to wear masks every day. I mean, it's okay to have different, you know, different senses of who you are, but not like, oh, it's a networking gig got to put my networking face on and be like full on like, hey, how are you going? You know, nice to meet you and all that stuff when it's, it's not real. It's not me. You know, that's not the kind of person that I am like. I mean, I, I see my friends like, hey, how are you going? And hug and stuff. And then we talk and play games and I'm yelly and I'm screamy and I do all sorts of things and I, and I, you know, I'm quiet or I'm loud. It doesn't matter, but I'm not fake and I don't like to be fake. And I know I've met some people, camera just died on me. So quickly get into it and then I'll just cut this off. Um, but basically... What was I saying? Um, I have met some people during my coaching years where they have commented and said, oh, um, you know, it's not that they didn't straight out say, oh, you're inauthentic or anything like that. It's more like um, they made a comment saying, oh, you know, oh, you do get angry. Oh, that's awesome. You know, I thought you were just always so nice all the time. And it did take me back a little bit because as coaches, one, you do have to be nice, um, not push over very nice, but you've got to be positive. I mean, how are you going to go and coach people if you're not going to be positive? But the thing is, when you're too positive, it gets scary. In life, it's not always going to be positive. And what I want to share with my clients is that you're actually learning how to cope with the, the not so positive things or the unresourceful things in a resourceful way. You know, so it's not like saying, oh, you've got a problem and, you know, you solve it. It's more like, okay, so there is something about the way that you are that maybe you don't like. Okay, let's learn to love it. Let's learn to love it because you can't fight the, the, the voices in your mind that keep pushing you to, you know, to do something or they're like, that's negative, that's not good enough or whatever. You can't fight it because the more you fight it, the more louder it becomes. And so what I like to do with people and what I'm doing with myself now is I just have to live with it. You know, I just have to learn to accept it. And I know a lot of coaches tell, you know, thank the ego to say, yep, okay, thank you very much. See you later. I don't think I can do that as yet. You know, maybe, maybe in the future, yes. Right now I'm more like, okay, what's going on? Tell me what's going on. And I listen to it and I might dwell in it. And I might dwell in it for a little bit more. And I might think about it even more. And then I might think about, okay, well, shut up, but what, what, what is the meaning of all this? What are you trying to teach me? Um, and so from all of this, uh, where I'm at at the moment is I'm learning to say no. I'm learning to say no to the things that are unresourceful. And I'm learning to say yes to the things that are resourceful. And they do actually come from requests from people who truly want me to be there. And they're actually getting out of their way sometimes for me to be there. I mean, how can I say no to that, right? But I'm not going to say yes to people who are just going to take advantage of me and just take my time and just think of my time as, oh, it doesn't mean anything anyway. 
And if it's going to be like that, then I'm sorry, guys, but no, I am not going to do anything for you because um, if you don't respect me, then you're not respecting my art, you're not respecting my craft, you're not respecting my thoughts, my, um, you know, my, the level of enthusiasm and seriousness that I take in everything that I do, and you're not respecting me as a person. So um, that's my pledge to myself for before I turn 30, that I will not say yes to people that don't respect me and I will just say no. Learning to say no. Um, so that's my thoughts for the last, from the last couple of weeks. I don't know what the next couple of weeks are going to be like, uh, but hopefully you guys will continue to say yes to the people who love you and no to the people who are just not good for you as well. And to really be kind to yourself um, and just listen to your thoughts and see where that leads you. Not in a dark space, hopefully. Um, either way, look, if you want to share your thoughts with me, you can comment below. If you want it to be more private, send me an email. My email is below as well. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear from your experiences just to see if maybe we have the same thoughts or maybe it's just me thinking stupid things. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching. I know it's been a very long video and I hope you guys have a really good week and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!